um, Vince Russo, his singing, his Twitter followers, his paintings, and the disco puppet. Um, it, they're all on the list. I had a, I, you know, I had a conversation with Vince um, right. when we did the Time Out show last week, and he kind of agreed. He said he was he's open to this, and I right. told him that the bro that I think you know because like Conan, well, like when we watch the shows, you know. We we watch it like based on you know like we like some things and stuff, but we're not like look you know critiquing the, the show with a fine tooth comb. We're kind of just looking at like the style the shows are written in, whether there's threads, you know, whether the backstage segments are good, what, what, you know, what the storylines are and stuff, everything. And I kind of got Vince to admit that that the re- that the the reason he's ultra critical of of the sh- of the, the raw the creative right because every right. week he's railing on the creative is because the difference between like you know like me. And Vince is when I was in the booking meeting in WCW, I was like in the room and we were like the, the, the idea, you know, we're idea guys, you have a room full right. of guys. They're all soundboarding ideas and everything. But Vince is the one that actually would go home and put the pen to paper and write the show. So Vince, like from, from, a, from, a, from a, he like looks at this show from a writer's perspective. So like right. he's critical of like, promos the guys are cutting because he wouldn't write the promo that way he would write right. a different promo. you know what i'm saying but i, I say Vince, i think that like, you're like you're you're like you're you're using like a fine-tooth comb to critique the verbiage being you know just because you would write it differently you know what i'm saying like i hear the verbiage on the show and i like okay that does that work in the realm of like did it advance the storyline did it make me interested in the next match and stuff? that's all i care about i, I don't care about exactly like like i would have said this or whatever right like the like, way we critique the right. show right and he kind of agreed that that might be his problem with, with watching the show is that when you're looking at it from a writer's point of view and you have to watch all three hours, he's like literally like kind of critiquing like the verbiage and stuff. You, you know, it's because he wouldn't write it that you've way. That, you know, so, you, so, yeah. you, well, I had that problem where I was always trying to overbook everything and overthink right. everything. And I just learned to enjoy the show. You know, right. and I, that's what I do. I enjoy it. And then when we review it here, I'll bring up some stuff that could have been better. Or if something's good, put it over. Because I want to make a but point. I, yeah. Here's the point. We always critique, you know, like like Ron Smackdown, you know, like, like wouldn't you want to draw more fans? Right. right. Like you can always like, you know, they're like they're, they're, they're drawing way less than they used to. OK. Right. However, it's like we're completely ignoring the fact it's like. Bro, how many more fans do they need to draw on TV if you're selling out house shows and you're selling out your pay per views and you're doing record business? Right. It's like, like, li- like, literally, like, how much more right. do, do, you, do you need to like? How many? How much higher do the ratings need but to I, be? I've, I've if always you're thought. Out, if you, go ahead. Go ahead. I've always thought that it's been a false barometer to equate. Oh well, you know, the ratings used to be higher before, but yeah, but there weren't that many platforms to watch it on it right. as there is now. You can keep up with video clips on YouTube that take two to three minutes that like, you know, a segment right. on the show and, you know, and you read what happened on the show. Right. And stuff. So like, but, but the point being is, is that like you, you see that it's like, okay, well, their ratings are decent. They're doing decent stories. Then you look at AEW, bro, they're not doing good episodic storytelling and they're not drawing fans to the live shows. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you would sit there and say, well, dude, because that's I, think, I think that proves that as, yeah. as, as we are like a, Great wrestling match. Like I told right. you, I saw the one between Osprey and Mike Bailey, and I loved it. Right. We are like a great wrestling match, but bro, it's the storylines and the characters that keep you coming back. Keep, you know what I'm they saying? Get the fans to pay to go see the show, not just good you matches. Right. right. You can't yeah. sell you like we've th- this formula of okay, we're selling great wrestling. Well, like this is all you're drawing then. You know right. why don't you sell storylines to combine with your great great wrestling instead of just selling the great wrestling? Because that's what they do, bro. They they advertise these matches, you know, and then they think they're like, wow, they're, they're, you know, the people go, wow, what a banger this is going to be, you know. So, but there's no there's no story to it. It's like, right. so why would I, you know, it's like saying so like like they're missing. Yeah, and it's a banger in that community only. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So yeah. Like per- right, perfect what, example. I'm I'm sitting here recording with you guys. It's eight oh five Eastern. Dynamite's ten minutes away, and I didn't go. Right, you know, and I'm a fan, so that that's yeah. a perfect example. Yeah, like what would you go? It's like what what are you interested in on that show right now? No, nah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not, I looked at yeah. the, car, the the cards out, and I looked, and I went, you know, that's all right. Imagine if they were in Philly and they were having like Kenny Omega versus CM Punk tonight. Yeah, something. Yeah, anything. You yeah, know? <laughs> it's like oh, that show, like a diamond. They would have, a, they might have had a sold out arena. They could have been telling that story. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. You know see. It looks all like right. the two big things they have is Okada's here. And then Van Dam's going to team up with Hook again, and that's really. But how many people know who Okada is, Joe? Yeah. If you're not a hardcore fan, 
the guys like that would already be there. Selling Oka- right. Yeah, you're selling Okada to the audience that already exists. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like they, right. they already know they know the guy, but it's like nobody else is a guy. But you're making your old your audience happy. It's like, oh, well, that's fine. They're going to come to the show anyway. Your mm-hmm. hardcore fans are going to come to the show and watch the show every week, regardless who you put on it. Because as Unless long as you, you have like the just a get- terrible product, they're going to follow right. you. Well, and they'll even probably say, though, that this was great because that's the type of fans they are. Even if the show stinks and it's like a bad, you know, like bad wrestler, like bad matchups. So they, they would say, oh, this is, is a that good an match. indictment on the AEW fan base? I would agree with that, yes. Uh, but Vince Russo yeah. is still on the list, by the way. <laughs> okay, I like that. I, yeah. I like that. 